My most anticipated films of the year. Did I say that too loud? My most anticipated films of 2024, starting off with one that should be obvious to anyone who knows me and how I will always go see a ridiculous, stupid action movie in January because there's literally nothing else to do. But this one, this one I'm a little bit excited for. For one, it's a Jason Statham movie. And it's a Jason Statham movie that's getting a wide release that is not an expendable sequel, which means there's always the chance that it's a decently okay film. Beyond that, and I didn't realize this until I pulled up this little page here to do this, to do this read through, it's directed by David Iyer, which, you know, looking at the things that he's done is not exactly, doesn't mean this is gonna be a slam dunk good movie. You see here, the Suicide Squad, right, excuse me, not The Suicide Squad, just Suicide Squad, and also Bright, but he also did Fury, which is not bad, and he did End of Watch, which is good, so maybe, just maybe, this is gonna be a good movie, and you know what, I'm gonna go to the theaters, and I'm gonna see for myself if, in fact, it is a good movie. I'm actually kind of excited for this. There is such a potential here for this to be a dumb movie, but not a stupid movie. There's a chance. There's a small sliver of a chance, and I'm going to hold on to that chance as long as I possibly can until I see the movie, in which case, who knows what happens. Maybe I end up hating it. That's also always a chance. Now this next one, our number nine, our number two film, I don't know, I don't really have these in any kind of order, is Nosferatu, the new film by Robert Eggers, director of The Northman and The Lighthouse and The Witch. Some of my favorite films, you can see them right here. I mean, I'm not gonna say Northman's one of my favorite films, but The Witch definitely is. I have a witch tattoo somewhere on my body that you guys can't see. So the fact that this little goth baby boy is gonna be coming in and directing a remake or retelling of one of the oldest vampire films of all time, which has its own interesting history behind it, I'm just so down for. I am so down for this. Especially when you consider that he very easily just could have made Dracula. Dracula's in the public domain. He could have just made a Dracula movie, but he specifically decided to do Nosferatu instead which I don't know what that means for the film specifically because the story of Nosferatu and Dracula are pretty much the same thing. Like the original Nosferatu film was sued and destroyed. Like almost all copies of it were destroyed because it was found to be uh, in copyright infringement of Bram Stoker's Dracula. So I'm kind of curious to see why, why, why it's Nosferatu and not Dracula, if there is a reason. I don't know what that is, but I'm curious. I'm so very curious. I'm so excited for this. Speaking of another film that I'm really excited for, Mickey 17, the new film from Bong Joon-ho. You remember Bong Joon-ho, right? The director of Parasite and Memories of Murder and Mother, probably one of the best living directors currently going today. Well, yes, he has a new film coming out. It is starring Robert Pattinson and Mark Ruffalo and Tony Collette and Naomi Aki and Steven Yun. And I am so hyped for this. I don't even know what this is about. Whenever I see the title, Mickey 17, I'm like, oh, someone is going to do something with the original Mickey Mouse that just went into the public domain. And I guess it's going to be Bong Joon-ho. There's like that stupid little horror game that came out or is coming out. And then there's Bong Joon-ho being like, how about I make a whole goddamn ass movie about it? That's probably not what's happening though. Mickey 17 is an expendable. A uh, disposable employee on a human expedition sent to colonize the ice world Nephilim. After one iteration dies, a new body is regenerated with most of its memories intact. Oh, most of its memories. Guess what we're getting, everyone? We're getting Memento in space. Nice. I'm down for this. I just only hope that because this is a science fiction film, Bung Jun ho was able to get the budget to do that properly. Because if you cannot, if you cannot do that and the CGI is bad, no, no, I am not about that life. So he's a Cylon. Yep, Bung Jun ho is secretly relaunching Battlestar Galactica. I hope no one tells NBC that's what he's up to because I think they're doing that right now anyways. But yes, this one I am hyped for. Give me the Bung Jun ho Give me all of the Bung Jun ho What's up next from all of these auteurs? Hey, look at that. It's a new film from Luca Guadagnino called Challengers, starring uh, that person that a lot of people like, Zendaya. This one, I once again have no idea what it's about. Uh, I guess it's about a tennis player, which like, it doesn't matter. This could be about an absolute turd. It could be about, God, I don't know, Ben Shapiro. It doesn't matter. 
It doesn't matter who this film is about. I don't care. It's a Luca Guadagnino movie. The guy who did the Suspiria remake. The guy who did Bones and All. The guy who did uh, that remake of The Swimmer, I think. Or Le Pessin. I can't remember. Actually, it was probably Le Pessin. Yes. Uh, the Alain Delon film. The guy who did that remake. He's such a good goddamn director. And I just, I just can't wait. I cannot wait to see what he does with this. With these tennis players. I'm all about this. I want this so bad. I need this. And this is probably the first time where I've ever said that about a film that involves tennis. <sighs> I can't wait. What's next on this list? Oh yeah, the movie about America blowing itself up. It was going to happen eventually. It might as well be Alex Garland who tells the story. So this film... I only found out about very recently, thanks to that new trailer coming out, coming from A24. Once again, this is a film that I'm excited about because of the director, because it is Alex Garland. I know that his last film, Men, was divisive. It was a lot of fun for me in the theaters because I got to hear everyone be grossed out by the last 20 minutes of the film. Uh, so that was great. That was really fun. But also... Alex Garland has made some absolutely brilliant films in his career. Ex Machina, probably at the top of that list. Now this one, looking at what would happen in America if states in America decided to just, you know, go to war with one another, I'm fascinated by this. And it may seem like it's a bit of a departure for Alex Garland, who up until now hasn't really done action movies, right? He did Annihilation, which has like a gun in it, but it's not an action movie. Ex Machina, not really an action movie, even though I think there's some fisticuffs in it. Men has some gross shit in it, but it's once again, not really an action film. But then, but then you have to remember that Alex Garland definitely, probably a little bit, I just got caught up because someone told me to look at chat, but I don't want to because I'm on a roll. Definitely, maybe, probably, but I think he absolutely did. Ghost directed the movie Dread, the recent one that came out in like 2012 or 2013 or something like that. So that's awesome. I'm, I'm so happy that he's now coming back and doing a different kind of action film, but I know that he's capable of it and I'm excited. I want to see it right now. It's coming out in April as well, so we don't even have that long to wait. Now, why did I need to look at chat? Oh shit, they just announced that Mickey Zimmy got pushed back as we speak. Wait, literally? It literally happened. While I was talking about this film, they announced that it's getting delayed? You're kidding me. No. <laughs> well, there goes all of my happiness. I hate this. I hate this. I hate this a lot. But you know what? Maybe it makes good content. And isn't that what we're all here for? Smile twinkle god damn it all right well let's just move on from civil war then and mickey 17 and maybe we will be able to talk about some films that are coming out that won't suddenly get delayed why the hell would they make that announcement at 7 30 p.m on a tuesday who who gives a shit about movies getting delayed at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on a Tuesday. Moving on to the next film I'm excited about, Untitled Gladiator sequel, which I'm going to put in this list because, according to Letterboxd, it's coming out in 2024. And so I am going to remain optimistic that it is actually going to come out in this year. And the reason why I am excited for this film is one reason, and one reason only, and that is Paul Mescal. Ridley Scott hasn't really been doing great stuff for a while, although The Last Duel is a good film, but it's Paul Mescal that I am pulling for here. This is his first really big movie. This is the potential star maker for Paul Mescal. So if he can pull this off, if he can do well, and this movie is not a giant pile of shit or just a plodding, boring history lesson like Napoleon was, then this could be a momentous moment in Paul Mescal's career. And I want him to do good. I want him to do well. And so because of that, I want this film to do well. I want this film to be good. Also, it looks like we've got Denzel Washington and Pedro Pascal and Connie Nielsen in this as well. So I'm happy with that. Also, it appears that no one from the original Gladiator is involved in this. I haven't seen the original Gladiator in a thousand goddamn years. Get down in the chat and let me know what's going on. And by chat, I mean comments because you're watching this on YouTube, except for you people who are watching it on Twitch. Follow me on Twitch. Man, I'm so good at synergy. Connie Nielsen is in the original? Her? Oh, maybe. Yeah, right. Sorry, she just looks kind of young in this photo, and I had trouble imagining her being in the original. I guess she would have been about 35 in the original? God damn. 
God damn, Connie Nielsen, give me your skincare products. So let's now move on from this movie that probably everyone's gonna go see because there's gonna be nothing else to see in theaters to a film that no one's gonna see even though there's no one in theaters. There's no films in theaters. This one is called Cuckoo and this one is a shot in the dark for me. This is a guess. I really don't know how this one is going to play out. This is a horror movie, so already there's a bit of jeopardy involved. You'd never know with horror movies if they're going to be good or not. And on top of that, I am basing this off of the fact that this director did a film called Luz. And I have not seen this film, but I have seen the trailer for it, and the trailer looks pretty sick. So I'm hoping this film being good and that trailer being awesome means that this film will also be good. What is this even about? Chased by a mysterious woman, 17-year-old Gretchen, who just moved with her family to an alpine resort after her mother's death, must uncover a conspiracy to save her and her sister. Ooh, interesting. So it's a cat and mouse kind of game. And I guess that's the mysterious woman right there. And is she holding a knife? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Next one on the list. How about an action film for all of you? It's Ballerina, a film which I'm pretty sure takes place or will take place in the John Wick universe. And the only reason, the only reason I'm excited for this is because it's Anna de Armas kicking huge amounts of ass. Ever since we got her in No Time to Die, absolutely laying in and destroying people during her brief 15 minutes in that film, I have been wanting to see her go crazy again and again and again. There better be no plot in this. I don't give a shit. I want pure action from front to back. I don't want any dialogue. I want punches. I want people to communicate in Morse code using kicks and punches. Do not even pretend to give me a story because I do not care. But I guess because Keanu Reeves and Ian McShane are in this both, we are gonna get some story, which is, which is lame. I don't like that. Wait, Lance Reddick. Oh, is this his last film? Did he just shoot this before he passed away? And Norman Reedus is in this as well. And Angelica Houston, I guess she would have to be. And Gabriel Bryan too. Oh man, I am pulling in some of my favorites from the 90s and 2000s into this one. This is great. I'm hyped for this. Ballerina, I'm hyped for it. And now I'm gonna make the fatal mistake of seeing who the director is to see if that is a giant red flag. Oh no. Live Free and Die Hard, Underworld, Total Recall, and Underworld Evolution. I fucked up. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I fucked up so bad. I should have done the research. I should have looked into this. I, 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 I apologize. First, the Mickey 17 debacle, which was not my fault. Not my fault. And now this. I'm a bad, bad content creator. Oh, wait, no. Live Free or Die Hard's the fourth one, right? Okay. This is not a bad movie. It's better than Die Hard 2. Maybe there's hope. God, I hope there's hope. Let's just ride that little bit of hope into the next one. And you guys might've been thinking to yourself as I was going through all of these films, hey, wait a minute. I thought TJ's always trying to get us to watch films directed by women. How come there are no films directed by women at all in this list? Well, guess what? I can only work with what's available to me. And this, this is available to me. One out of 10, it's the best I could do. But I am legit, excited for this and I'm so happy, I am so happy that this is gonna be coming out. And it's not because it's a zombie film. I couldn't give a shit about any old zombie films. They have been done to death and there's probably no way to do a good original zombie film anymore, although maybe I'm just being cynical. But you know what this film has that other zombie films don't? Rennet Rensen, the star of Worst Person in the World. One of the best performances of the year it came out, I believe 2002 or 2021. I have been just waiting for her to be in another kind of high profile film. I don't know if she's been in anything else since Worst Person, but this is the first one that I can remember seeing coming to theaters and I'm hyped. I'm hyped for it. Yes, it's a little strange. I guess it is a bit of a different twist on uh, the zombie film. Here, let me, let, me, let me read you what it says here and you can, you can judge for yourself. On an abnormally hot summer day in Oslo, a strange electric field surrounds the city as a collective migraine spreads across town and the newly deceased awake from the dead. So like, I guess they're gonna try to fight the zombies by giving them aspirin? Is that what's gonna happen? I don't know. But also, I can't just not talk about how there's an inverted cross in this poster. So, is Satan trying to give people headaches? Seems like something he might be about. I don't really know anyone else who's in this film. Wait, Anders Nielsen Lee. Is he, is he the other guy in this? 
No. He's the main? He's the other main and worst person of the world. They're getting back together. They're getting the team back together. The scene that those two had, Anders and Renat, in In Worst Person in the World is like one of the best acted scenes of the last little while. I am fucking so happy. Oh my god, this makes up for Ballerina tenfold. Hell yeah. This is why you don't do your research, because then you can be surprised by things and be genuinely happy when they happen. Sign me the hell up. What has the director done? Children of Satan. I'm sold. I'm 100% in. Let's go watch this movie, everybody. And now for the last film that I am the most excited about. This should come as no surprise to anyone. It's Dune Part 2 because how could it not be Dune Part 2? I was excited about this film when I thought it was coming out in November of last year. And now that I've been made to wait until March, I am even more, more excited because I need this film. I need it so badly. And here's the wild thing. I've read this book. I know exactly what's gonna happen, or at least I have a fairly good idea of where they're gonna have to go. I've been watching some of the trailers and they're doing things in those trailers that I don't remember from the books. It's making me wonder how close to the actual story this film is going to be. The first film is actually pretty close. It's pretty close. This film, I don't know. There's also been some rumblings though that Denis Villeneuve is gonna be making a Dune part three, which is going to adapt uh, Dune Messiah, the second book of the Dune novels. And there's maybe, even a little bit of setup he's going to want to do in this film if that's the case although he doesn't have to either it's a really interesting case where dune messiah takes place like 10 years or five years or just an amount of time after the second part of the dune novel so he doesn't have to adapt it at all he can go on and do some other science fiction film that will be one of the best science fiction films ever made because that's just his jam that what that's what he does but this film i need to see all of the fighting all of the war that one scene that they've been showing in the trailers where the different Shai Haluds are like charging into battle like goddamn Hannibal's elephants. Like that's goddamn crazy. An absolutely incredible cast. One of the greatest science fiction stories ever told and we are gonna be able to watch the conclusion of it. This is the big one. I think this is the big film of the year. And I mentioned this in a previous stream. I think Dune Part 2 could spend like four to five months in theaters if that summer movie season is especially weak. Because if you need something to go back into IMAX, why not put Dune into IMAX if nothing's coming out in like June or August? This film could potentially take over the entire year. I'm excited. I'm through the roof and I hope you're excited too. And with that said, you need to tell me what you're most excited about. Get down in the comments below and let me know. And I'm not gonna threaten you this time because I think that's weird and lame. So just have a good day.